In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask a blessed Mary ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The Jews listen to the priest Ezra who read and explain God's word to them. The people weep because they realize their unfaithfulness to God's law had caused their banishment, thereafter renewing their commitment to follow the law of the Lord. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women and those children old enough to understand standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate he read out of the book from daybreak till midday in the presence of the men the women and those children old enough to understand and all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all people might see it, for he was standing higher up than any of the people, and as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people, their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so that all could understand what was read. Then Nemia that is, his Excellency, and Ezra the priest scribe, and the Levites, who were instructing the people, said to all the people, Today is a holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad, and do not weep. 
For all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, Go, eat which foods and drink sweet drinks, and allot portions to those who had nothing prepared, for today is holy to our Lord. Do not be saddened this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing of the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Let the words of my mouth and the thought of my heart find favor before you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Christians are given gifts to build up and enrich the, earth, the body of Christ, which is the church. Christians shall be concerned for one another for the good of the whole body. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as a body is one though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. Now, the body is not a single part, but many. You are Christ's body and individually parts of it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. <laughs> the Lord sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor and to proclaim liberty to captives. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> Since many have undertaken to come to compile a narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as those who were eyewitnesses from the beginning and ministers of the word have handed them down to us. I too have decided, after investigating everything accurately anew, to write it down in an orderly sequence for you. Most excellent Theophilus, so that you may re realize the certainty of the teachings you have received. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the, of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. 
He came to Nazareth where he had grown up and went according to his custom in the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read the, and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found a passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the, to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passes fulfilled in your hearing. My dear brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat at welcome po sa Minor Basilica ng Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawa. Tanong po, kayo po ba'y nagbabasa pa ng Bible? Wala. Ah, wala. Nagbabasa pa. Yes, father sa cellphone. Oh, marami. Today we are celebrating the Bible Sunday. Sabi nga, ang Bible na mga Katoliko, amoy amag, amoy alikabok, amoy anay. Bakit? Nakadisplay lang sa kabinet, nakadisplay lang sa altar. Ewan ko lang kung may nagbabasa pa. Kaya madalas nga nabiro na yung Bible na mga protestante, amoy kilikili. Alam niyo kung bakit? Kasi pag nagpipreach ang bahay-bahayan sila, iniipit dito sa kilikili. Ikot-ikot kung saan man sila napupunta. Sa mga katoliko, amoy amag, amoy alikabok, amoy anay. Bakit? Walang nagbabasa. Sabihin, Father, masyado kang makaluma, meron na sa cellphone, Meron na po sa iPad. Meron na rin po sa tab. Sa kapader, madalas boring basahin eh. Lalo na kapag walang aid, manood na lang ako ng Netflix. Masaya pa. This is the, this is the challenge actually for all of us to read the Word of God. Actually, kung titignan natin yung Ibanghelyo, pati yung mga readings for today, kung nakinig po tayo, kung nakinig tayo sa first reading, sa responsorial psalm, pati na rin po sa second reading, pati sa gospel, meron po silang isang kinatawag natin na unified theme. At ano po yun? Ang kapangyarihan ng salita ng Diyos. The power of the Word of God. At kapag tayo po nagbabasa ng ibanghel, ng, sa libay na natin ng Biblia, wag po natin gawin yung tinatawag natin na cutting-cutting. Nauso yan eh. Yung bubunot ka, pipikit-pikit ka pa. Nauso yan. Nasaan ako sa school, nauso yan. Pipikit ka. Father, bunot. Anong kapalaran ko today? Bubunot ka. May isang Bible passage. Okay po yun. But you know, when we read the The word of God shall be taken as a whole. May kwento, may text, may context. Naalala ko tuloy yung isang businessman na lugi sa kanyang business. Na lugi. Sabi niya, ano kayang minsahe ng Diyos sa akin today? Ang ginawa niya, humikit siya, nag-Bible cutting. Ano kaya ang minsahe ng Diyos na gagawin niya sa akin, papagawa niya sa akin ngayon? Binang Bible, binuksan, kinak, tinuro, daliri. Sabi niya, pagbukas niya, ang message doon, Judas Iscariot ran outside and hung himself. Sabi, sabi niya, ano ba naman ito? 
tumakbo si Judas Iscariote palabas at nagbigti. Ito ba talaga yung message ni Lord sa akin? Sabi niya, hindi, hindi ito, hindi ito. Hinlosa ulit yung Bible at binuksan ulit, turo. Pagkakita niya, pikit siya, pagturo niya, ano nakalagay doon? Sabi niya, oh, ano ba ito? Go and do the same. Hindi, dapat hindi ito. Sinara niya ulit yung Bible, pangatlong beses sabi doon, pagbukas niya kanya mata at pagbasa, what you intend to do, do it quickly. Kaya mahirap kapag ka nag-Bible cutting tayo, ang salita ng Diyos ay makapangyarihan. Una, sa totoo the Word of God transforms us. It changes us. Ang salita ng Diyos ay nagbabag at binabago tayo nito. Pansin nyo yan? Kapag ka nagbabasa ka talaga ng salita ng Diyos, babaguhin ka niyan. Halimbawa, kapag ka nagbasa ka, sasabihin, Love your neighbor as yourself. Iyong neighbor mo ay presidente ng mga marites at madalas ikaw ang kanilang tema. Love your neighbor as yourself. Walang niya yan. It transforms us. It changes us. Kaya nga sa first reading, mapapansin ninyo na si Ezra binasa yung salita ng Diyos. For six hours, binasa yung Torah, the law of God. At nakinig ang buong community. And the community listened to it intently. And they changed. And their faith was strengthened. It transforms us. It changes us. Kaya pag nagbasa po tayo, ganun ang nagiging effect. Kaso nga lang, minsan namimili tayo. Kapag maganda yung reading, maganda yung bagay sa ano ko, okay. Yung tinatawag natin na interpretation by accommodation. Ko ano lang yung gusto ko, yun lang. Pero kapag it calls you to change, it calls you to transform something. Huwag yan. Uncomfortable. Kaya na ang salita ng Diyos, nakakabagabag. Bakit? Kasi may mensahe na kapag ka hindi ka handang gawin ito, mababagabag ka. O salitang forgiveness. O di ba ang hirap niyan? Lalong-lalo na kapag ka-fresh pa yung sugat. Naku. Forgive one another as mga ganyan ako. But the Word of God changes us. It transforms us. It strengthens our faith. Yan po ang tema ng first reading. At kung mapapansin din ninyo, the Word of God calls us to communion. Kaya minsan nakakalungkot kapag ka ang salita ng Diyos ay ginagamit pang debate. Just to shame other people. The Word of God calls us to unity. It calls us to communion. Kaya ang second reading sinasabi, lahat tayo dito ay membro at bahagi ng katawan ng Diyos, the mystical body of Christ, na maaaring ikaw ay teacher, ikaw ay preacher. You are a part of that mystical body of Christ. Kahit ano pa man ang trabaho mo sa buhay, we are all part of the mystical body of Christ. It calls us to communion. Kaya ang salita ng Diyos, kapag kayaan po ay pinag-aaway kayo, mali ang interpretation ng salita ng Diyos. Because it always calls us to unity, to communion. Yan yung effect ng salita ng Diyos. Kaya yung pagka, misa, nung gumagamit pa ng mga salita ng Diyos sa social media, just to shame other people, that is not the way to use it. It calls us to unite. Kaya kung mapapansin ninyo din, sa misa, anong ginagawa? We break the word and we partake of the bread, hoping to be united with one another. Kaya anong ginagawa? Bago tatanggapin si Jesus, let us offer one another the sign of peace. 
Kasi bago tayo makibahagi, yan, the body of Christ, hindi lamang ito yung tinatanggap natin, but the body of Christ, the mystical body of Christ, all of us are members of it. Maaring tayo yung bibig, yung iba sa atin dito, maaring hindi masarang sasalita, maaring iba sa atin ito ang kamay na umaabot o nag-reach out, maaring iba sa atin yung paa na gumagalaw papunta sa mga nangailangan, all of us are united because we are all members of the mystical body of Christ. Yan yung sinabi sa atin sa second reading. Na ang salita ng Diyos calls us to communion. Kaya pag tayo po nagbabasa ng Bible, huwag nating gamitin ito to shame other people. It should not be used na para mangaway ka pang debate. Hindi. Kaya sa totoo lang, minsan pag may mga nagdi-debate, it's useless. Why? Because the Word of God calls us to communion. Kaya kapag kayo po'y nagbabasa ng Biblia at nangaaway kayo, ibang usapan yan, hindi nyo naintindihan. Kaya anong sinasabi sa Biblia, di ba? Sabi ni Kristo, Love one another as I have loved you. Kita mo na yan. Nasa Bible yun. Ah, marami din sa atin, memorize ng memorize ng tinatawag natin ng mga verses. Okay po yan, wala pong mali dyan. But sometimes, tandaan po natin, the mass, bago tayo magpapartake, bago tayo mag, anong sinasabi? We break the word of God so that all of us, hopefully, when we say peace, peace be with you, peace be with you, we are united in partaking the body of Christ. Isa pa po, yung pangatlo po, yung tinatawag natin, ha? kapag tayo po ay nagbabasa at nakikinig sa salita ng Diyos, it empowers us to do our mission. Kaya nga sa Ibanghelyong, binasa natin, mapansin ninyo, that Jesus Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit, He is not just bringing a message, actually, He is the message. So, anong sinabi ni Kristo sa Ibanghelyong binasa natin? Sabi niya, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Sa totoo lang, Ibanghelyo ngayon, this is the vision mission of Jesus Christ. The good news, to bring glad tidings to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives, to bring sight. Kaya kung mapansin ninyo, it empowers us to do our mission. Kapag kaya tayo po nagbabasa palagi, it empowers us. Marirealize natin na ang mission pati sa buhay, ganito. At since tayo po ay tagasunod ni Kristo, sabi nga, the Word became flesh. That is Jesus Christ. He is not just a messenger. He is the message. He is the servant of the Word. Oh, makita natin yung kanya nga noon. Hindi lamang siya yung, siya yung nagbibigay ng minsan, siya yung mismo ang minsahe. The Word became flesh. Kaya nga kapag tayo po ay nakikinig talaga sa salita ng Diyos, dito natin mapapansin, it empowers us. We bring healing to people. Di ba? We bring healing. Pag nagpapatawad ka, you, you are healed. And the person that you have forgiven is also healed. It heals us. It liberates us. It brings forth love. It brings hope. Kapag tayo po'y nagbabasa, nakikinig, isinasabuhay ang salita ng Diyos. Ito po mangyari sa atin. We are transformed by it. We are in communion with Christ and with our community. And we are empowered to do our mission. Sa aming mga pare, lalo na nung deacon kami, bago kami mga ordena na pare, merong isang part dun sa liturgy na pinapahawa kami ng Bible. At magandang alalahanin ko. At magandang alalahanin din natin. Hindi lamang kami. Ang sinasabi na habang hawak-hawak namin yung Bible, Believe what you read. Teach 
what you believe. Practice what you teach. Kapag tayo po ay nagbabasa ng Biblia, sana ganito rin ang disposition. Believe what you read. Teach what you believe. And practice what you teach. Today, we are celebrating the Bible Sunday. All of us are called, perhaps not just to read, but to live the Word of God. Paulitin ko po. Believe what you read. Teach what you believe. Practice what you teach. Hindi lamang po ito para sa mga nagpapari. Ito po ay para sa ating lahat na bininiyagan ng Diyos. Hindi ba? Let us all stand. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, and occurred in with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the Giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Father sent His Son to us to proclaim the good news of His forgiveness and salvation. Mindful of this, let us pray to the Father that we possess the Spirit of the Lord. And for every petition we shall answer, Lord, listen to our prayer. Lord, listen to our prayer. For the Pope, bishops, priests, and deacons, and all ministers of the world, May they tirelessly bring Christ's good news to the poor, the sick, the prisoners, and the lonely. We pray. Lord, listen to our prayer. For those who serve our country, may they full, fully grasp the Word of God as the source of power and authority. We pray. Lord, listen to our prayer. For the end of the pandemic, May the Word of God become the source of true hope for those who are still in agony because of sickness, separation, poverty, and hopelessness brought about by COVID-19. We pray. Lord, listen to our prayer. For all church organizations who are involved in biblical apostolate, be their initiatives of sowing the Word of God be reached to complete fruition so that their very lives and those whom the minister to me become a living witness of God's word. We pray. Lord, listen to our prayer. For our beloved dead who listen and were nurtured by God's word, may they enter the heavenly court with all the saints of God. We pray. Lord, listen to our prayer. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Lord, listen to our prayer. Heavenly Father, let the words of our mouths and the thoughts of our hearts find favor with you. Nourish us with your spirit so that we may do our share in bringing the good news to all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
place is tended. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sacrificing them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being, and while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raise up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in a joyful celebration, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, let the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Socrates our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
have mercy on us all, we pray, that to the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Please stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, peace be, be with you. With you.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only see the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please kneel and let us pray the prayer for the elections. Let us pray that the forthcoming elections may truly reflect the will of the Lord who guides the destinies of nations. Let us pray together, deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. From coercion, violence, and terrorism. Deliver us, Lord. From de dishonesty, lies, and all distortion of truth. Deliver us, Lord, from bribery, graft, and all conspiracy for fraud. Deliver us, Lord, from threats, intimidation, and perverse language. Deliver us, Lord. Let us pray together, hear us, Lord. Hear us, Lord, that conscience may always be our ultimate norm. Hear us, Lord, that the common good may always be our highest goal. Hear us, Lord, that human dignity may be respected all the time. Hear us, Lord, that the poor and the weak may always have the priority. Hear us, Lord, the genuine fear of God and love of neighbors may guide those who seek public office. Hear us, Lord, let us pray. Shepherd of souls and Savior of the nations, politics is your gift to us, a call to serve others. May our political engagement for voters and candidates bring glory to your loving name and help us grow in holiness forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray.
Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May He let His face shine upon you and show you His mercy. Amen. May He turn His countenance toward you and give you His peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. We go in peace. Thanks be to God. We shall now have the prayer for the blessing of the sick and also prayer for the blessing of the rosaries and other religious articles. For the blessing of the, of the sick, our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing, you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness toward our sick brothers and sisters. Free them from illness and restore them to good health. Through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary, Manawag, so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We shall now have the prayer for the blessing of the rosaries and other religious articles and images. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ, Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary Manawag, may these rosaries, images, candles, oil, and other religious articles be blessed and made holy in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.